beautiful flower. So cute. Hi everybody, I'm Michael. I'm a landscape architect and environmentalist. And today we're gonna to show you how you can take care of a sun hosta. We have ours growing in a container out here on our outdoor balcony, but we're also gonna show you how you can take care of her in your garden. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow. The sun hosta is a hybrid and she's adapted to growing down here in South Florida. She primarily grows from zones 8 through 11, but she does best in zones 9B through 11. When you go further north of 8, or even in 8, you can sometimes run into some frost issues in the wintertime, and they'll burn the plant down to the ground. But she's, but she's a tough plant. She can bounce back. But she's, she, she really likes growing from zones 9B to 11. And she's known for two things. The hosta is known for these spectacular flowers that are trumpet-shaped, and lavender in color. I will give you a side by side so you can see it up close. Off this, this center scape that they call, that's which is basically a flower stalk, and it is a showstopper. It has this beautiful light scent, but it's it's just very, very pretty. The, the flowering time of the year for the for the uh, hosta is pretty much in spring through, through parts of summer. But ours, we're in October. It's, it's hot as Hades out right now in Miami, and she's decided to flower. So she has a she has a wild range of flowering and, and can go through October, as you can see here. And beautiful green and white variegated leaves, or it's more of a creamy white margin on these ruffled ruffled leaves that she produces out from a center. Your son Hosta was specifically hybridized to grow out in full sun. We have found, however, that she does best in getting partial sun. So that means getting more like six to eight hours of sun, but not heavy full sun throughout the day. If you do that, you're going to see some scorched leaves. And I'll show you, I'll cut a piece off here. And this is what you can see if you get it in the full sun. They'll tend to scorch, and that's a, that's a, that's a typical uh, a symptom for you to watch out for if yours starts to show that kind of decline. The, the plant can handle full sun though, and it just depends on where you are and if you have a lot of trees in your yard or you have, a, like we have ours going in a, in a container and it's and she's growing next to our coconut, we're facing west, so the coconut gives her a lot of that break in the hot four o'clock sun and we think that that really helps. So she gets just enough, obviously, when plants are flowering, they're showing you they're happy, they're able to expend that energy to give you the blooms. So we, so, so partial to full sun, uh, again, she's been uh, hybridized to grow in full sun, but we feel it's best to get her in partial sun to almost full sun. On the soil type for your hosta, let's first talk about hostas grown in a container. We want that potting mix, or we recommend that potting mix to be 80% outdoor potting soil with 15% perlite and 5% worm castings. We also like you to add in some uh, mycorrhizal soil amendments. We like the Bigfoot variety. And don't worry, we'll give you all this information written out in, uh, further in the video. And um, that will produce, for your uh, hostage grown in, in, a, in a potted container, a real good loamy mix, well-drained mix. That Your plant will do very well with that type of soil, soil type. Now, for garden, garden grown plants outdoor in your, in your yard, we have a different potting mix that we recommend. The potting mix itself will start out with 50% outdoor potting mix, but take 50% of the whole of the soil that you take out of the hole and mix that together to make, to make your potting mix. So that potting mix is actually 50% potting, uh, outdoor potting mix you get from the big box. 50% native soil, and that makes your potting mix that we recommend. That potting mix is is, is to be 80% uh, plus 15% of perlite plus 5% worm castings to get your 100%. But what we're basically saying is that we want to add in a little bit of the native soil so that your your hostas get used to growing in the native soil around them. You don't want them just growing in that hole. They want they're not going to flourish. For watering your 
uh, hostas. We recommend in a container is to water them once a week, water it thoroughly around the container, and for your hostas growing in the garden, we recommend that you just you follow what you ha normally have with your normal irrigation system, which may be three or four times a week. Your, your uh, hostas are gonna do fine, fine growing in that condition. One thing to look for if you notice any wilts or stuff like that, you know you may be watering a little bit too little or a little bit too much. So always just test the soil around the base of your plant to, to get, to get a, uh, some guidance from that. For fertilizing, we recommend for, for uh, using a 15-9-12. Osmocote makes a slow release. We prefer a slow release. They love that. Or even a 20-20-20 slow release. On plant pests, hoyas do have problems with snail and slugs. So you have to be on the lookout for them primarily in the evening hours. In a container grown plant, you don't typically have that issue as much, but you, you can see that you can see that uh, from time to time. Now we're going to rotate over into written care instructions because I'm literally melting out here. It's October, 75% humidity out outside here in Miami, and I'm basically drenched. So what we'll do is we'll rotate over into written care instructions, and then we'll come back and summarize at the end. We hope that was super helpful to you and if you have any comments please just leave them in the description box below and i'll make sure i get back to you and we want to thank you for stopping by until the next video bye if you found value in this video hit the subscribe button and the notification bell we post weekly thanks